Sarah Bartman, a historical figure, suffered the injustice of being enslaved and exploited for profit. She was subjected to the degrading display of her naturally curvaceous body, enduring unimaginable cruelty and sexual exploitation. Who was Sarah Bartman, and why is her story significant? What were the circumstances surrounding Sarah Bartman's exploitation? How did the exploitation of Sarah Bartman contribute to racial stereotypes and discrimination? In what ways did Sarah Bartman's story impact the understanding of consent and objectification? What were the historical and cultural factors that allowed the exploitation of Sarah Bartman to occur? How has Sarah Bartman's story influenced modern discussions on body image, beauty standards, and representation? What steps have been taken to honor and remember Sarah Bartman's legacy? Let's delve into the story of Sarah Bartman, but if this your first time to our YouTube channel. Welcome to His Trends. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Sarah Bartman, also known as Sarchi, given the name Sahura at birth, was born in the Gamtus Valley, located in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Her parents belonged to the indigenous Khoisan community. The precise date of Bartman's birth is unknown, but it is believed to have occurred around 1789. Unfortunately, both of her parents passed away during her early years. Her mother died when she was two years old, and her father was killed by a bushman while herding cattle when she was a teenager. Following the deaths of her parents, Bartman was sold into servitude to a Dutch trader named Peter Willem Tezar. As a result, her name was changed to Sarchi, a diminutive form of Sarah in Dutch. She was then transported to Cape Town, where she spent at least two years employed as a domestic worker. Bartman had a child who died in infancy and subsequently became a wet nurse for Hendrik Caesars, the brother of Peter Caesars. In order to earn additional money, Hendrik Caesars decided to exhibit Bartman at the city hospital. At that time, Alexander Dunlop, a Scottish military surgeon who worked at the Cape Slave Lodge, had a side business supplying showmen in Britain with animal specimens. He took a particular interest in Bartman's naturally curvaceous body, which exhibited steatopygia, a condition characterized by a significant accumulation of fat in the buttocks and thighs. Additionally, Bartman had an elongated labia, which led to her being derogatorily referred to as the Hottentot Venus, in reference to the Greek god of fertility. While her appearance was typical for Khoisan people, it was considered rare and provocative by some. Dunlop saw an opportunity to exploit Bartman and began pressuring her to travel to Europe as an exhibit in order to generate income. Bartman initially showed no interest, but Dunlop persisted. Eventually, Bartman reluctantly agreed, stipulating that Hendrik Caesars must accompany her. Initially, Caesars refused, but eventually in 1810 he agreed to go. Due to Bartman's illiteracy, it is unclear whether she fully comprehended the terms of the contract she was given and willingly consented or if she was coerced. Dunlop marketed Bartman as a natural curiosity, showcasing her in London's Piccadilly Circus. She was dressed in skin-tight, flesh-colored garments, adorned with beads and feathers, and she would often smoke a pipe. Spectators were charged one shilling to observe her partially unclothed body. For an additional fee, some individuals were allowed to touch her. Some historical records suggest that the significant interest in Bartman's buttocks among men influenced the Victorian bustle fashion trend. Bartman's ongoing exhibition in London following the enactment of the 1807 Slave Trade Act sparked outrage among abolitionists. Although the act abolished the slave trade, it did not address the issue of slavery itself. The Dutchman's display of an enslaved woman caused a scandal, prompting the African Association, a British abolitionist society, to demand her release. Hendrik Cesars, in response, protested, arguing, doesn't she have the same right to exhibit herself as an Irish giant or a dwarf? Unsatisfied, the association took Cesars and Dunlop to court. Bartman was interviewed alone for three hours during the legal proceedings. In her testimony, she supported Dunlop, 
stating that she was not being held against her will, nor had she experienced sexual abuse. She claimed to have willingly worked in London for her own profit and expressed no desire to return to her family. Despite the judge's belief that Bartman had been coerced, he had no choice but to dismiss the case. The attention drawn to the case increased the popularity of Bartman's exhibition initially but gradually declined in the capital. Her exhibit was subsequently taken on a tour across Britain and eventually reached Limerick, Ireland in 1812. Around September 1814, Caesars took Bartman to France, where she attended society parties before being sold to a man named Henry Taylor. Taylor then sold her to an animal trainer named Jean Rio, who treated her with extreme cruelty. Under Rio's pressure, Bartman was exhibited for 15 months at the Palais Royal in Paris, effectively enslaving her. Rachel Holmes, the author of The Hottentot Venus, The Life and Death of Sarchi Bartman, suggests that Bartman began to heavily indulge in drinking and smoking during this period, and it is likely that she was also subjected to prostitution by Rayo. Previously, Bartman's exhibition showcased her singing and dancing, but under Rayo's ownership, she was treated like an animal, paraded around and subjected to the gazes of zoologists and painters who sought to study her as an example of scientific racism and a curiosity of sexuality. She was also displayed at the parties of the wealthy. Bartman's excessive smoking and drinking worsened over time, and she passed away at the age of 26 in 1815 from an inflammatory and eruptive disease, possibly compounded by syphilis and aggravated by alcoholism. Instead of conducting a proper autopsy to determine the cause of Bartman's death, Naturalist Georges Cuvier chose to make a plaster cast of her body and dissect her. He preserved her skeleton and pickled her brain and genitalia, which were then put on display at the Museum of Man in Paris, where they remained objects of public viewing until 1974. These displays were presented as evidence supporting Cuvier's theory of racial evolution, falsely claiming that Bartman's body parts demonstrated her sexual primitivism and intellectual equality with that of an orangutan. His aim was to establish a racial hierarchy with black individuals positioned at the bottom, closest to animals, and white individuals as the superior race, an ideology that gained significant momentum during that era. In reality, Bartman was intelligent, speaking not only her native language but also Dutch, English, and some French. In 1994, South African President Nelson Mandela requested the return of Bartman's remains and plaster cast. After initial objections, the French government agreed in March 2002. Her remains were finally laid to rest in Hankey, in the Eastern Cape Province, in August of the same year, 187 years after her passing.